At this time, I'd like to introduce our first presenter, Krista Poss, a Senior Product Marketing Manager for System Sensor. Krista, take it away. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, today, I am first going to walk you through our newest product in the FAST portfolio, uh, FAST Excess. I'm briefly going to cover the other products in the offering and then what makes FAST um, completely unique in the market. Um, then we're going to switch gears a little bit and Luis Barros will take you through our software program, Pipe IQ, that designs, configures, and monitors the FAST system. So he's going to do a live demo of that software for you. Then he'll walk you through um, highlights of ideal applications um, and then we'll take time for Q&A after that. Okay, so what is Fast Excess? Well, it's the latest in the Fast range of products that is targeting smaller applications of up to 5,000 square feet um, in size. As you can see, it is also a smaller and more compact device for these smaller, er smaller areas that we're covering. It's fully supported by the Pipe IQ software, which helps you design, configure, and monitor the system. By using the same field-proven dual vision detection chamber, um, which we'll talk more about, Fast Excess offers great performance in mission critical, standard, or even harsh environments with the same unbeatable immunity to false alarms. The connectivity makes sure to make Fast Excess easy to access, program, and monitor um, with systems that are already in the building. So that's really a unique function of our Fast devices. Um, which I'll cover in more detail, but those integration and connectivity options. FAST Excess is fully approved by UL, ULC, FM, CSFM, and is in process at our major global agencies. So those will be um, announced in the very near future. Okay, so here's a bit more detail on the specifications of Excess. As you can see, the current draw requirements for this device are considerably lower than other devices. Um, and what we are showing here is the high fan speed. So if you need a, a smaller coverage, so say you only need to cover 2,500 square feet, um, you might use the low or the medium fan speed, um, which those configurations are set within the Pipe IQ software. You're going to see a much lower current draw um, also on those fan speeds. The sampled air temperature is minus 4 to 140 degrees F, um, and this really allows you to take FAST into many applications where standard detectors simply can't be used because of their operating temperature. Um, and then you can see our smoke sensitivity, um, one of the hottest in the industry. So this gives you a really, really um, low sensitivity, which is going to monitor um, smoke that is really invisible. It's going to give you 30 to 60 minutes um, before an actual fire event for somebody to make um, to go in and, and find what the problem is before an event would ever happen. So a very low sensitivity um, on the fast product line. So let's look at the piping network. Um, so one device covers up to 5,000 square feet in standard fire detection. So you can see the breakdown in coverage for each category according to NFPA 72 and 76. So that's very early warning and early warning. A single pipe length can cover up to 180 feet, and then the total pipe length is 225 feet. FAST uses ultrasonic airflow monitors um, which are used to check the health of the pipe network. So we are monitoring constantly for breaks or blockages in that pipe network. And if this occurs, you'll see a flow fault. Um, we are also using electronic sensing throughout the filter and the detection chamber um, to monitor those two as well. And we'll cover more on that um, in some later slides. Okay, so fast excess flexibility is quite unique. We can program the three levels of sensitivities to match the exact requirements of any project, application, site, or environment. Um, we're not constrained to predefined sensitivities. Uh, because of the adjustable fan speed, we are able to build both extensive pipeline configurations or very small ones. 
Um, the unique nuisance uh, rejection technologies um, make FAST really the best-in-class device when it comes to the areas that we can now use um, aspirating smoke detection. Um, so we'll talk about the filtration technology and why you can really start to use these in areas that are outside of mission critical. The communication and connectivity is all integrated in the unit um, and is available at no extra cost. Um, so what this is is the built-in LCD for easy access to main messages, the unit status, or any troubleshooting. So it makes it really easy to get information from the device. We have added a USB um, for quick and simple plug and play configuration and monitoring. Um, Ethernet, so TCP IP for remote communication, so that's programming, monitoring, messaging, um, emails, or text messages to up to six different recipients. Um, so again, a lot of ways for people who are not on site to get information of, of what's happening at the device level. And then the Modbus integration to building management system. So if there's already an existing um, system in the building, the FAST devices can talk to that system. Um, and that integration is built right into the device. And then lastly, we'll also offer intelligent models that communicate directly to major fire alarm control panels via the signaling line circuit. So this is done without extra modules or software. Okay, so the area of coverage of 5,000 square feet positions um, fast access for smaller spaces such as small mission critical applications for high sensitivity um, and those early warning segments. However, it also offers extremely effective protection in standard sensitivity applications where the use of spot detectors is not viable. So especially useful in challenging environments that are dusty, humid, cold, or a mix of all three. Um, so as you can see in the standard sensitivity applications, lots of different areas that um, using standard detectors are really difficult. Um, you should think about fast access for um, use in these types of applications. And we'll talk more about these um, in more detail in Luis's section. Okay, so we're going to pause here for our first poll question. David, I'll turn it back over to you. You got it, uh, Krista. Thank you. Yeah, so this is the first poll question. So take a look at your screens and, and check uh, any that are applicable to your business or the type of work that you do. What type of application do you see as ideal for fast access? So check all that apply. Perhaps it's uh, data centers or some of those harsh or, or dirty environments. Maybe it's the duct and return air monitoring, uh, elevator shaft, or other. And what we'd love to know is if you picked other, if you have a specific application in mind for this, uh, this particular product, use the chat feature and just tell us what those are. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, vote. Uh, we see we've had over 100 and we're up to about 110 people that have voted so far. So we'd love to have you take a moment and um, vote. And do know that um, uh, Nick Gomez is offline and he is, uh, or online rather, and is answering questions that come in. So, oh great. So let's look at some of those others here before we post the results. Uh, so it's looking at um, gymnasiums, small explosion proof rooms, MCC and IO rooms, uh, cable spreading rooms and tunnels, equipment applications, um, large computer and IT uh, rooms, uh, any room with electronic, major electronic assets. So great, those are, those are uh, likely all uh, good. Uh, Krista, any comment on those that they've, they've posted here? Any that are, are inbounds or out of bounds that you would say from those that we've just read off? No, I think they're great applications. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. Okay. So let me, great. We've had about 70% uh, of you voted. So let's take a look at these results. So uh, most of you are saying, of course, this allows multiple voting. So most of you are saying that small data center is, is perhaps an ideal application. 83% of you in fact that voted are indicating that followed by that harsh and dirty environments and duct air. And then I've just read some of the other ones. Let me see if anything else has come through. Um, in the notes, but it looks looks good. So, all right, very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll, and uh, Krista, it's back to you. Okay, thank you. So next we're gonna talk about FAST-XM. 
so this is the first product in the portfolio that was launched in 2010. And this device covers up to 8,000 square feet. We've just launched some new improvements to this device, which cover um, a lower current draw, a lower sensitivity level, and an all-black housing to match the other products in the portfolio. So XM offers the same built-in integration options to make installation a breeze. Um, it is approved at all major global agencies. Um, those include UL, ULC, FM, CSFM, and also a Class 1 Division 2 approval. Um, and XM is in, available in conventional and those intelligent models um, that I spoke about that connect directly to the SLC loops of certain fire panels. Okay, so here's the specifications for XM. Um, and as you'll see, many of them are the same that you saw in XS. The major differences between the models is going to be the current draw because of the fan speeds and then the coverage area. Other than that, they have the same sensitivities, temperature ratings, um, approved power supplies, air movements. Um, those same specifications um, cover each of the products across the product portfolio. Um, and the power supply is any power supply that is listed for fire application use. When we are looking at the piping network of a fast XM, um, like I said, in standard fire detection, we're covering up to 8,000 square feet, a maximum single pipe length of 262 feet. Um, on a branched piping system, the aggregate length is 328. You're only using one inlet and outlet pipe at a time. Um, we also use ultrasonic sensors um, similarly on the excess for a break or blockage in that network. Um, and then the sensing for flow through the filter and the detection chamber. So that carries throughout the product line as well. Okay, now we'll move over to XT. XT um, is our largest coverage device um, with four pipe inlets. So this covers up to 28,800 square feet with this one device. It has a three-speed fan. So users can optimize a network with maximum, maximum efficiency. So if you don't need to cover that large of a space, you can use a lower fan speed. Each of those inlets has an ultrasonic airflow monitor. So we're monitoring each inlet for clogged or broken pipe. Um, so you'll see on the front of the device, um, you know, we, we have these LEDs that will tell you what pipe um, has the trouble in it if there is an airflow trouble. Uh, we heard that easy configuration was important from our customers, so we incorporated a USB. Um, so now installers can easily configure the device without having to apply external power. Uh, this device is UL, FM, CSFM, ULC, and Class 1 Div 2 approved as well. And it also offers the same built-in integration options, which we know are really important to be able to connect to um, existing systems within the building. Okay, so the specifications on XT. Again, very similar as the other two, um, except for the current draw. Obviously, we have a, a higher um, power fan to cover a larger area, so the current draws are different here. And then the coverage area is much larger, covering up to 28,800 square feet. We can cover um, on a single pipe length up to 400 feet, um, and then the branched piping maximum total length is 1,050. So you can use up to four inlets and one outlet at a time, obviously covering a larger space. We've got the four inlets here. And like I said, we're monitoring each of those for um, airflow health as well. So XT is really designed for those big, large, open areas where you need to cover a lot more space with one device. So now let's talk about what specifically makes the FAST product family different than anything else on the market. Um, so really we'll start with talking about the three-stage filtration process and the advanced algorithms. Um, so this process distinguishes nuisance particulate from smoke. 
which makes FAST an extremely robust detector, even at really high sensitivities. So how we do that is a patented particle separator, which you can see is circled um, in the picture on the slide. Um, the particle separator was originally designed by our aerospace colleagues within Honeywell and then perfected by our FAST design team. As you can see in the diagram, air and particles first enter the device um, through that particle separator. Any large particulates are removed and exhausted out of the device before they ever enter the filter or the detection chamber. Um, so this is doing a number of things. It's extending the life of the filter, it's extending the life of the device, and also reducing um, potential for nuisance alarms. The second step in the filtration process is the 30 micron replaceable filter, which you can see pictured here in the red circle. All of the devices in the FAST family use the same filter, and it's designed to be very easy to replace with only two screws. You will only replace the filter when needed. So like I mentioned, we're constantly monitoring the airflow across this filter, so you're only going to change it when it is detected that that filter is clogged. You'll get a trouble signal at the panel. Um, the device is constantly monitoring airflow, and you'll get that urgent fault. It's not on a timer. Um, so it's not like all of the filters in your system are, you know, one day going to go into alarm because they're clogged. It really depends on the application um, and what kind of area that it's, it's installed in. That's how often you'll have to replace that filter. And then lastly, um, what we do inside the detection chamber itself is the third part of that process. So we use dual vision technology within FAST devices. Um, and what this means is we use two light sources for maximum accuracy. The blue LED is used to identify the broadest range of fire particulate, and then we use an infrared laser to identify non-fire particulate. And this is where the advanced algorithms are distinguishing between smoke and nuisance. Um, the last time is within the detection chamber itself. The second thing that really makes FAST unique is the built-in connectivity options that we offer. So we heard from our customers that making this as simple as possible uh, was an important need and it added a lot of value. Um, so we offer addressable models, like I mentioned, that sit directly on the SLC of the fire alarm control panels, um, which you don't need extra hardware or software. So what I would say here is don't underestimate the value and simplicity that this option offers. FAST also connects to Modbus, the IP network, and acts as an internal web server monitoring, allowing monitoring from anywhere in the world. So this is what um, the FAST connectivity option looks like if you choose to have um, email notifications. So within Pipe IQ, you can set up up to six email addresses. So when alarm conditions change within the device, um, up to six people can be either emailed or text messages that something has changed with the device itself. Um, so you can see here the picture is um, what that email would look like, and then you click on that active link and it takes you to the web server to show you what's happening at the device level. Okay, another view of what that looks like, so easily integrating to the IT system or fire system. And then the monitoring portion. So Luis will talk a little bit more about this when we get into the details of Pipe IQ, um, but it allows you to remotely use the Ethernet connection um, and the web browser. So Pipe IQ is checking the status, it's tracking events, you can view message logs, and you can look for trends. Um, you can view stored and live events and then real-time graphs that show the different smoke levels at the device itself. So you can see what we're showing on this device here um, is mimicking exactly what the, is happening at the device level itself. So the particulate meter, the five alarm levels, and then the flow um, conditions on the bottom. 
And lastly, um, a family look was an important feature to our customers. So as we were growing and expanding um, the FAST portfolio, the feedback we got was to have all the devices look and feel um, and operate the same way. So similar user interface and device operation can be found on all of the devices for ease of use. Um, like I mentioned, the devices use the same filter on all models and one software program. So this makes it really easy for um, the people who are designing, installing, and commissioning the de these devices. And with a streamlined product portfolio, we can offer certifica certification training in just four hours. Um, so you don't have to be trained on every device. They all look um, and interact the same way, which was really important to our customers. We're going to take another break here. David, I'll turn it over to you for our second poll question. Very good, Krista. Thank you. So we do have a second poll question here. So if you could um, help us with this question. What is the most important, what is most important to you when choosing an aspiration smoke detector for a project? And we've listed a couple things there that frequently come up, but is it that immunity to uh, false alarms, easy to install and commission, maybe a long filter life, built-in connectivity options, competitively priced, or other. So think of the projects that you've worked on for Aspiration or the future projects that you will be working on. If we've struck one of those there, please indicate it. If it's other, let us know what other is. <clears throat> and while you're doing that, I'm going to actually answer two questions that have been uh, kind of frequent posts here. We've had uh, 30 folks that are 30 different questions that have been posted, and Nick is uh, feverishly working at getting responses out on those. But two that have come in kind of commonly are, uh, what fire panels can I use with FAST? And the answer there is, uh, in the conventional FAST, it will connect to any panel via a module. For the intelligent versions of FAST, um, the FAST interfaces with Notifier, with Gamel FCI, Honeywell Building Solutions, Johns Controls, and Fike. Um, so that, that's been posted by a number of people, so we wanted to get that out verbally. Um, also, uh, I've been asked for copies of this PowerPoint, and rest assured, before end of day, you will get an email back from me that will contain the link to the actual presentation. So um, that's coming your way here by end of day, as is your CEU certificate. So let's go to the results. Thank you for voting. 135 of you voted, so that's a good, good participation. So the most important looks like immunity to false alarms, followed by competitively priced, and easy to install and commission. So thank you for voting in that poll question. Also, those that put in other, so let's see, let's just cover those here, uh, servicing options, minimum, um, minimum servicing, so that was listed a couple times. Let's see here, let me scroll down. Uh, a couple are repeated. Um, all of the above plus the size and relays. Ability to adjust the, the seating in the field to tailor the system to the environment. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you for submitting those. At this point, we're gonna turn the presentation over to uh, Luis Sparrows. Luis is a sales engineer for our FAST business unit. Luis, take it away. Thank you, David. Okay, well, what we're going to talk about uh, or like to cover in this portion of the, uh, the presentation is basically what was updated to Pipe by Q, um, you know, to support. The main, the main thing added to Pipe by Q was uh, the ability to support now the new XS uh, product line. So with that said, uh, it's still the same design configure and monitoring software as Krista had mentioned. Um, do not have to be connected to the actual device to do this. You can do this. Uh, at the office, uh, create the file, go to the job site, and then just upload that file into your system. Uh, once you do program it, all those programming, all those settings, uh, fan speeds, thresholds, all those are stored into the FAST unit. I saw a question, somebody asked, uh, what if we lost power as a default back to uh, the regular fan speed, or what fan speed is the default back to? Uh, it, it will default back to all of the programming parameters that were set. So it's not going to lose its, uh, its, its memory if you lost power. Uh, and it's, it's available, uh, it's, again, at no, cost, at no charge at systemsensor.com uh, forward slash fast. You can download that. Uh, with that said, I'm going to now turn over my screen to Pipe IQ to just show you. Oh, here. 
Okay, there we go. Hopefully you see my screen. All right, so again, we now have the ability, the main, the main feature or the main reason uh, to, the, to the update to Pipe by Q was to add the fast access. As you can see here, um, you can have a project, you can have the building, you can rename all this information, but now we can have a project that consists of multiple devices. In this case, I have an XS, an XM, and an XT in this one project. But to just show uh, what, what we've added, we did add a couple of other features. Uh, we're constantly adding features uh, that, are, that, that come from uh, the customers, so please uh, download it, use the software. Uh, if you see anything that you would like to add to it or you know, doesn't make sense, we'll be more than happy to, to review it. If it makes sense, we'll, we'll uh, incorporate it uh, and so forth. But just so you can give an idea as to what was added, um, so under fast access, for example, we still have all of the controls that we've had with the other models uh, um, as well as, as the wizard. And then in the wizard, uh, we can go through. So now we're, now we're just specifically talking about the excess detector. So if I want to go through, and I just want to give you an example here, let's say a room that's 90 by 32 with a 14-foot high ceiling. We can enter those numbers in, hit next. Okay, where is the pipe located below ceiling? This is, again, this state all the same. Okay, what we want to show you is now we have our summary of our system. We say finish, and now the system will design it for you. Okay, so we still have, you know, the reports. You can generate a pipe layout or a bill of material reports if you'd like. Uh, I can create a consolidated bill of material if I had a, like this particular project has three devices. If I say consolidate bill of material, it'll actually combine all of the parts and pieces needed for all three systems so each one can have a different uh, pipe layout uh, on this one you know this one project so with that said uh, as far as highlighting the, the the additions or the the new features added to it one of the things we used to get is uh, customers would say okay I'm designing a piping network but my whole sensitivities need to be a certain range and 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 whole sensitivities you can adjust by adjusting the detector's thresholds, the actual alarm thresholds within the detector itself. And every single alarm threshold is going to be unique for that pipe network. So depending on the amount of pipe you have, the number of elbows, the number of holes and the size of the holes all take into account as to what your hole sensitivities are going to be based on what are the alarm levels. And I'll show you what we've added as far as a tool. So we can go up here now to this calculator program that's going to view the, all of the specifications of this piping network. So for example, so anything in red, we're going to have, there's issues, okay? So for those familiar with very early warning fire detection systems, the maximum transport time uh, from any, any port, it's typically the, 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 the furthest ports have the worst case numbers, but any port shall not exceed 60 seconds for very early warning. In this case, we have a 61 second hole at hole seven, and hole 14 has also 61. So we have, to, we have to adjust that. Now, we can start adjusting hole sizes if we'd like, and maybe, you know, see if, if it's going to fix it. And actually, it's making things worse if you're seeing what I'm doing here. Um, all one eighth inch holes, what we've added is we have this ability here, this auto balance button. If you were to keep an eye on the actual um, hole sizes are all one-eighth inch holes. So if we were to design this system and we were to actually drill one-eighth inch holes, the last two ports would have uh, would not meet the transport times. So what we do offer is this auto balance button where you can hit auto balance, and now what it does is um, it actually now adjusts all the holes so that you get rid of all the transport times. So now all the transport times are within the time, 55 seconds. But we have other red issues. We have other boxes. And these are the sensitivity of the actual holes. So NFPA 76 says if you want uh, for very early warning, it says the hole sensitivities cannot, for alarm condition, cannot exceed 1% obscuration. And as you can see here, we have pretty high obscuration levels. So one of the features we've added to this version of PipeIQ is this target button. Now what you could tell the software is, okay, I want my target sensitivity holes to be this range. So for pre-alarm, I want them to be 0.2, and for my alarm conditions, I want them to be uh, 1. Maybe I want it to be 0.75 for my first stage of alarm, and I want it to be a 1% of alarm. Okay, so these are my target, what I want the holes to be. Well, what do I need to set the actual detector's thresholds? So we hit this button here, 
And now what happens is the detector now needs to be programmed for these levels. So then we go back and we say, okay, we got rid of those reds, and we still have a couple other reds with pressures. Okay, so we look at these, and we can say the whole sensitivities again. We can hit auto balance. Okay, so now what we're doing is if we're fine tuning. So now between going back and forth between the target sensitivity button and the auto balance button, now we are problem free. So what does that mean? That means it, so we'll say okay. What does that mean is that when they go to install this system, if they want to use an XS, they want to use an XS to cover, well, I put 90 by 32, they would have to follow the schedule pattern for the holes. And that will work for an XS. Okay? So that was one of the, this, this is one of the features that was added uh, recently with this new revision. Another things we've added, other features we've added is you can remove, let's say for example, I want to remove this piece here, but I want to, I want to copy this branch. Right? So we have this branch here, but I want to copy that also here. So we give you the ability now to also highlight a, an entire segment. You hold on, you, you turn on your caps lock key, you select the point from which you want to copy and everything after, so it highlights it all. We can now hit control C, which is our copy command. You can now select the pipe you want to copy it to, control V to paste. Now there's my branch, so now it's just a matter of connecting the two. So now I've just duplicated that system. So we go back to our calculator page and we see if we have any, we have any issues. And again, we have issues now because we've just adjusted or we've, we've um, altered the piping network. So now we can go back to our target because the sensitivities now are a little higher because we've added all that extra pipe. So we go to our target. We still want our targets to be 0 0.2, 0 0.75, and 1. We say what our thresholds need to be at the detector. It tells you what you need to program those, those levels for, and we got rid of our sensitivities. But now we have our, we have our, whole, our, our whole transport times uh, issues again, not meeting the 60 seconds. So we can go and we can try to hit auto balance. Now auto balance will do it up to a certain amount. Once you start pushing, you know, adding more pipe and more pipe for one particular size system, that may be too small of a system to handle what you're trying to accomplish as far as coverage and pipe. So we'll try to hit auto balance and see what happens. Okay, well the software, it tried to optimize it as much as it can. However, we still have these issues, right? We still have these pressure issues. Now, what we can do here is it's basically telling us that for this size system that we've now added all this extra pipe, the excess is too small of the system. So we say, okay, fine. We use our highlight all capabilities. So I'm going to take the entire pipe network. I'm going to highlight that. Now what I'm going to do is copy it. Well, now I'm going to say, okay, XS was too small. I'm going to now use the XM. Well, now I have the XM page. I'm going to add a detector. There's my detector. And now I'm going to add the pipe. And adding the pipe is because I have it saved as a copy. So now I can paste. Now I just paste it the piping network. Now I highlight the detector. Uh, in the pipe, and I connect the two. Now I've just added, so I don't have to redesign that entire pipe network for the, for the XM. I can just copy it. Now I can view if I want to view it. And now I can go to my, my calculations. And now if I go to my calculations, we have the sensitivity issues. We know we can adjust the sensitivities. We say, okay, fix my, just my thresholds to what my target hole sensitivities to be. I say, okay, and now that pipe network will now work with an XM. So th this is all added to uh, the new version of Pipe IQ. It makes it very, very easy to determine uh, the piping networks and, 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 and a great tool as far as the figuring out if you're going to be within uh, working parameters. Another big feature, which was actually an um, input from the engineering community and, and, and a lot of the installers was, uh, or the submittal um, folk, was the, now that you designed this system, in this piping network, is there an ability to export this drawing so that I can import it to my as-built drawings? And that is another feature that we have added to Pipe IQ, where it's up here now, we do have the ability to export this. So now if you were to take this, you can now export it to a DXF or a DWG and save it as a, you know, a CAD drawing where it just takes the piping network, save it, 
as a block, and now you can import that to your as built and just um, just uh, transpose over the actual drawings themselves, so you don't have to you don't have to redesign the, the piping network. So that was also added to this versions of, uh, of Pipe IQ. Um, also, uh, again, keeping consistent, as Krista mentioned, it's, it's Pipe IQ is used to configure, to design, and to monitor. Uh, so if we were to say, yeah, let's save it, but now we want to use the monitoring tab. The monitoring tab is the same tab as we've had previously, where you can monitor, if you'd like to monitor all the systems out there we have. So you can have, uh, you can have a project that has 200 fast detectors, let's say, that, that, that are a variety of XSs and XMs and XTs, and it's just a matter of clicking which one you want to connect to, and it will actually change. So if you notice here, with XT, we have four pipes, so we can actually see the flow, the flow parameters of each of the pipes. Uh, XM has, doesn't have the four channels, so we don't have the four channels, and XS does not have the four channels either, so it only has one pipe. So that's the piece of software. Uh, again, for sake of the webinar, uh, we just wanted to highlight what was new to the actual Pipe IQ software. And as uh, Krista mentioned, we do have a four-hour certification uh, class that we can offer where we will go through in more detail of the, 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 the hardware, the software, the design concepts and codes uh, related to FAST. So with that said, we'll go back to, we'll go back to our the application portions I want to talk to you about. So, as far as ear sampling detection applications, um, we, we know that as far as mission critical goes, that's the number one application. However, there's a number of other applications outside of that mission critical that are ideal for for uh, for ear sampling detection. And with uh, with the introduction of XS, um, there's a lot of nice uh, uh, applications where Access will fit in quite nicely, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those. Um, so we talk about mission critical. Mission critical is definitely the the, the number one application for for ear sampling detection. You know, provides the the very early uh, detection, and especially within these challenging environments with heavy air flows and and so forth in these spaces. Um, you know, with with this type of system, we can we can monitor the uh, the return the HVAC return grills. Uh, to monitor for any presence of smoke in that space. A lot of data centers are going with a hot and cold aisle uh, containment. Hot and cold aisles, hot and cold aisles basically are, are, are rooms within rooms. Uh, so they're trying to contain all the cold air in one space to cool the equipment down to save on energy. So um, I deal with excess is that each one of these spaces may have different pressure differentials, and you don't want to use one detector to monitor multiple spaces, because if these multiple spaces have different pressure differentials, using one device, you can, you can run into some serious uh, issues with that. Um, so with having this, uh, a model like an XS, and maybe you have uh, 16 cold aisles in a, in a space, you can use 16 of the XSs to monitor the cold aisles, and then you can use maybe an XT to monitor the actual space itself in a data center. So again, the, the challenge is there is the heavy airflow uh, present in the data centers. And, you know, there are recommendations for underfloor samplings. We recommend um, underfloor protection. You do, you, you have to locate the piping at the highest point of that underfloor. So this is the floor, this is where you would walk on uh, in the picture on the right. Um, the piping would be at the highest point of that, bo of that floor void, and the holes will be facing down. What we typically recommend is that you would provide yourself a test port at the end coming out of the ground, uh, out of the floor, so that it allows you to test the piping network without having to lift up the, the floor tiles to find out where the last board is. So in our designs, if you were to, if you're looking for assistance, we can help you with this, um, and that we can, we will design this and give you these recommendations for you. Okay, another benefit to, to air sampling detectors, and again, Thinking outside of just that mission critical applications is, uh, you know, cost saving potentials in beam pockets, for example. Um, code says if the beam pocket is of a certain depth, you require a smoke detector in each one of those beam pockets. Well, if the beam pocket is less than 10% of the ceiling height, as you see here, this is right out of 70, uh, NFPA 72, if it's less than 10% of the ceiling height, then you can run the piping right under the beam pockets and just treat it as smooth ceiling. However, if the beam pockets are 
greater than 10% of the ceiling height, then you are required to have a smoke detector uh, in each pocket. By, but instead of having an actual spot type detector in each pocket, you can now have one head end aspirating detector and then just installing what we call our canes in the actual beam pockets to So you're meeting the intent of the code but while not adding all the costs of adding additional detectors, which then you have to have to test all of those detectors and you have to also, you know, installation, copper wire, and so forth, junction boxes for each of those, uh, of, of those ports. So this is a, a, this is a, a viable solution to, to meet the intent of the code, uh, which a lot of customers are using. Another application for harsh environment, because of, uh, as Krista mentioned, with our particle separation and the way we filter our, our, our the samples there, um, harsh environments, it's the same detector. You want to put that detector in a clean environment, it's the same fast detector as you would put in a harsh environment. There are no additional filters. You, uh, you will have, you may have, let's say, dust accumulation, um, dust accumulation in the, in the, in the uh, location at the ports. Uh, the detector supervises for that. We do have a, a pendulum in the front of the display that lets you know the airflow. So if the ports begin to clog over time, it will let you know, and then it's a matter of, um, of, of just blowing out or vacuuming the piping to clear out the ports. Now, some customers will actually install. We do not recommend that you blow compressed air with the pipe connected to the device, so we do recommend removing the piping, but if some customers do install a, a valve. Uh, as you can see here, the blue is a ball valve, and then a compressor fitting above, uh, above the, the valve where they can now blow out the, the ports if they wanted to. So these are things that we can help you uh, as well. We can put this all together for you. Uh, another ideal application uh, with, with XS um, is, is duct detector. It's not going to replace duct detectors, but it, they're all, all fast uh, models are rated for duct detector use as well. Um, they're not going to replace duct detectors, but you may have a duct detector that's hard to get to, hard to test, hard to service. Um, you can now mount a, let, let's say an excess remote. Uh, you can then run you know, 100 feet of piping to that device uh, or to that ductwork, and now you can have um, you can do all your testing and, and inspection from that one location, that remote location, without having to get into that, without having to get up into to test it at the duct itself. So you can do it for remote from remote applications. Now, how many ports, uh, how many pipings, and so forth? That's we do have an application guide that will that illustrates all of this, and it may, you know, depending on the width, it's going to number the holes, and, and that's all called out in that application guide as well uh, to assist you with that. But again, as I mentioned, we also have the design team that will be more than happy to, to help you. Um, so again, here's a large, maybe, maybe height-wise, you need two sampling points to, uh, for, for sampling and then one exhaust. So that's, again, depending on the width and the height of the duct to determine how many ports you're going to need. Another area of install is uh, where we consider restricted, uh, restricted access, uh, prisons, uh, hospitals, MRI rooms, uh, any of the type of where you just can't just go into that space. There's a couple of issues. One is the actual technology itself uh, interfering with the equipment there. Uh, but also the equipment interfering with the, with the detectors uh, in, in the case of, let's say, an MRI room. So it's ideal to have air sampling uh, because now you can have the, the piping in that space. CPVC plastic is not going to be affected by the magnetics or is not going to cause any uh, radio interference with, uh, uh, with, the device or with the equipment in that space as well. And then in prisons, and in prisons um, you have, well, obviously you can't put spot type detectors in there because in each cell, because it uh, of the inmate tampering with it, you can actually use capillary points, uh, run the main piping behind each cell, and then run a capillary point into each cell. Uh, some engineering firms we've worked with actually creative enough to actually hide the capillary point inside the light fixture. So nobody knows that's there. And then as far as testing and servicing of the detector, you can do it at a remote location at the last port so that you don't have to go into each, each one of the cells to test the ports. So another application restricted. Um, another big application we're seeing now with the introduction of XS is uh, smoke detectors and elevator shafts, which are, are hard to get to and are dangerous for technicians to be in there and, and the time needed 
Uh, you, and it typically it requires two people. You have your technician, you have an elevator uh, representative as well, shut down the equipment, get right the cart up to test the smoke detector. That can be all avoided now by using excess, let's say, for example, uh, in that space and having the sampling pipes and the exhaust pipes returning back into the, uh, the elevator shaft, and now you can do all your testing remote, again, in a controlled, safe and, uh, environment so you don't have to uh, expose anybody into, into, into a space like that. Uh, so that's another another application for it that we're seeing a lot of people use uh, since the introduction of excess. With that said, we um, we do have uh, we mentioned design. We do have a design team on on hand uh, where if you do have uh, maybe you you know you have an application for fast and you would like uh, some assistance, we'll be more than happy to design it for you for free. There is no cost associated to it. Uh, or maybe you want to design it yourself and you want to just send it in to us for review, we can do that for you as well. Just to let you know that we, we will support you, you know, from start to finish as far as a project goes. So you're not going to be, uh, you, you won't be stuck you know, figuring this thing out for yourself. It is pretty easy to figure out, but you do have the support, uh, you do have the support that comes with it as well. So systemsensor.com forward slash fast design. And you'll have a questionnaire. You just fill out the answers on the questionnaire and then go to our design team. It'll even ask you for an area that you can upload a drawing. Upload the drawing, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll use that drawing. It could be a CAD drawing. It could be a PDF. Uh, and, and we'll work with that and to come up with, uh, come up with a, a layout for you. So in summary, as what uh, Krista had highlighted, uh, early warning fast. Uh, early warning aspiration detection, uh, it does have advanced nuisance alarm rejection with the blue LED uh, and the infrared, uh, the, the laser, both sources analyzing the particulates that enter the chamber. Um, suited for a variety of applications, as I mentioned. Same detector as you see there is going to be installed in a very clean environment uh, of a mission critical, let's say, data center or in a mine or if it's going in, in a barn or, or in a very harsh environment, you can, it's the same detector. Um, so not just mission critical. Uh, maybe it's a freezer. Maybe it's you know just just some where, wherever you require smoke detection, but you can't put a, in that space due to the specs of, a, of the electronics of the smoke detector. Uh, more than likely, you're going to be able to put it in uh, an air sampling detector uh, with a piping system in there. Fast access covers up to 5,000 square feet uh, in one. A device with adjustable fan speed. So maybe it's a smaller project and you have multiple units. You can crank the fan speeds down and you can power all those multiple units off of one power supply. Uh, so it's an ideal, an ideal package. Um, all models, mod, Modbus compatible uh, that comes with it. It's on board. It isn't an option. Um, you, you have both conventional versions of the product and you have intelligent SLC loop versions as uh, David mentioned. With the, with the panel manufacturers, check with the panel manufacturer uh, to find out which models. Um, and then you can monitor Ethernet or browser. You can use the email server. That's also built into the unit and is not a, and is not a, uh, and not a package. It comes with it whether you want to use it or not. And I believe we have another survey question, David. Yep, we, we do, Luis. Thank you. So we're going to go to uh, the last survey question, which hopefully is the most important. You've just invested a little short of an hour with us here, and we want to see how we should follow up with you. So if there's items that we've listed here that would be applicable for you, please go ahead and check them. Check all that apply. So that first one is the FAST or the Aspiration Application Guide, which Luis mentioned. This is a 80-plus page guide covering numerous, numerous applications and the use of aspiration detection in those applications. Uh, we'd love to send that to you electronically. Um, the next is the uh, aspiration brochure, talking about our complete product line, including accessories. Um, that's a high-level look at the, the products. And then the next is the FAST data sheets, which is a very detailed look with um, all the technical specs and uh, ordering information as well. And then the last two are maybe you'd like to see a demo. You'd like to talk to a salesperson about uh, FAST. Uh, please contact me about a demo. Click that one. And then uh, contact me about a project. Uh, perhaps you have something that you'd like to talk to us about, uh, but you're not ready to enter that design form. We'd love to have a quick chat with you. I'm going to leave this up for a couple minutes. Uh, let 
anyone who wants to uh, check the boxes that are appropriate to them. And now we're going to go with the time remaining. We have about seven minutes left to the top of the hour. We're going to answer some questions uh, live here. Uh, some questions that have come in. In fact, you've, you've, been, a, you've been a very uh, good audience with questions. We have over 65 questions that have floated in through the online portal. So let's uh, answer a couple of these um, live as well. So um, first one, and Krista, Luis, I'll just do this as a toss-up, so whoever wants it. Uh, they're asking about EN54 um, approvals. What do we have? I know that's a European approval. What do we have in terms of EN54 approvals? Yep, so I can take that one. The FAST XM is approved um, for EN54. XT and XS are in process right now with uh, the VDS approval for EN54. Um, okay. So, you know, once we have those listings, um, we'll send out the emails um, and the, the sales managers in those regions will be notified as well so they can notify their customers. Great, great. They're in process. Um, Great. Luis, I know you touched on the default span speed, but the question is, is there a mm -hmm. default span speed? And if the unit loses power, will the, will the unit return to the speed um, that the user sets? Sure. You touched on that, but can you go in a little more detail? Yeah, not a problem. Um, they, they, they're defaulted from the factory or, or the software, I should say, the default on the software, because right? you have to send the configuration, the pipe IQ configuration to set the parameters of the, of the fast detector. They're all defaulted to high fan speed. Um, so, you know, you design your system, you can design your system with the maximum if you choose. If you, like I said, if it's a smaller system, maybe you want to make it small uh, or low fan speeds because you want to save on, on consumption of power. Um, but if the detector were to lose power and then that power were to come back, it's a non vol memory. You're not going to lose uh, any of the programming. So you're not losing the fan speed. You're not losing the thresholds. You're not losing... Uh, You'll even have the time. You have the time for up to 72 hours. If you lose power for 72 hours, the only thing you would lose is the time, where you just have to reset the time. But all the other information is still is still stays. You know, if you were to put contact names, if you use the email, the IP address, all that stuff retains uh, within the detector if you lost power. Okay. We've got a couple questions posted about hazardous locations, Class 1, Div 1, Class 1, Div 2. I believe we've stated it's class one div two, but I just want to make sure that that's verified and and the type of applications perhaps that that could be, that could be used in. Chris, you want to do that? Uh, I mean, I can. So, I can. So the XT and XM are class one div two approved. <clears throat> now this does not mean that they are explosion proof. Um, what it means is it can be installed in areas where flammable materials may be present. So typically it's going to be in the specification requiring um, an aspirating smoke detector that has a class 1 div 2 approval, um, which those two do. Excess is in the process of getting that approval right now. Um, it can, the device can be installed inside the protected area or outside the protected area. Um, so it's a class one div two, not class one div one. Um, and our, our literature is marked that way. The nameplates on the device as well have that, that listing on them as well. Very good. Next question is, re is regarding releasing applications. Can, can any of these units be used for releasing applications? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, keep, the, keep in mind, these are detectors. So you, you have to use them in conjunction with a panel. The, the, the detector doesn't get any listings or any, you know, any ratings for releasing. That's all the functions of the panel. These are just reporting the, you know, the conditions of the space to the panel. The releasing has to be all done via the panel's you know, logics, and the panel has to be listed for releasing. So can, the, can FAST be used to actuate those events? Yes, it can. Uh, is FAST listed for releasing? There's no listing that goes towards detectors for releasing. That's a function of the panel. All right. Um, speaking of the panel, can FAST be powered directly from the fire alarm control panel, or does it require external power? It, it can be powered from the panel. Uh, as Krista had mentioned, any 24-volt listed source, as long as it's listed for fire. So if it's a standalone supply, it's going to be listed for fire supply, but if you have a uh, a panel that has auxiliary 24 volts and it has enough power, uh, absolutely, you can power the fast unit off of the auxiliary power of the panel. You know, depending okay. on which model you're using, if you're using the conventional, you probably want to use the resettable power. 
If you're using a, uh, the addressable SLC loop version, you would want to use non-resettable power because the reset command comes from the SLC loop protocol. All right, very good. We have a couple questions too about the filter. Typical lifespan of the filter, how frequently should they replacement, replace it, and is it an easy maintenance item? Sure. Sure. The life of the filter, well, it's going to vary. It's, that's going to vary based on the, the, the location. Um, in, a, in a harsher location, you may get a couple of years out of the filter. In a cleaner environment, you may get longer. You may get 10 years out of the filter. Uh, but regardless, we supervise for the flow across the filter, meaning you're only going to replace the filter when the detector tells you that the filter needs to be replaced. So it's not, a, not so much a, a, a time. You know, there's not a... There's not a set time that, oh, this is going to you know, happen in a year or two years, or this is gonna, it's going to be all dependent on how harsh that condition is, you know, the environment. And then, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it monitors for the flow. And then as far as replacing the filter, it's just a matter of powering down the unit. Two screws, you remove the two screws, you loosen the filter cartridge, you insert the new filter cartridge back, you tighten down the two screws, and you power the unit back up and walk away. It will recalibrate itself. There's no need to recalibrate the detector. It will do that all automatically. Okay. Very simple. Probably have, time, probably have time for a couple more questions. So um, they have an application where, where there's a lot of diesel forklifts. So what about diesel exhaust and and sure. prone to nuisance alarms? How about that? You sure, sure. That I mean that that's that's going to be a, a, a case by case, but. For, for we do have them installed in areas where there's smoke as everyday business, in this case the diesel smoke. Uh, to the detector, it's obviously going to look like smoke, right, to the fast detector. Where in those applications we start to, what we recommend is, is setting the thresholds for those to the ports, again, the, 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 the actual port thresholds, or set those above what's ambient or what's present in that space. So let's say in a typical, you can have the first week of the detector sitting in a, a supervisory mode, and we can have different thresholds set, and we notice that it's always activating, let's say, uh, action two. And we know action two is, is set to 0.75% obscure, uh, obscuration. Well, then we know we'll need to place the detector so that it goes into alarm at 1% or 1.5%. So it's a matter of evaluating the levels of smoke that are in the space and then setting the thresholds to, to be just above those. Um, but again, the diesel smoke will look like smoke to the fast detector and it will go off. It's just a matter of now we, uh, we adjust the thresholds for, for, for that particular environment. Okay. All right, there. maybe the last question here, and we'll, we know we're right at the top of the hour. Are there recommended browsers when using Pipe IQ? version of Chrome, version of Windows that we'd recommend that they use? You know, initially, it, it, we, were, we were mainly focusing on Internet Explorer, but, but with this version, and, and actually since, since XT, uh, the version of the, uh, so we haven't seen a, a difference in, in uh, as far as performance. They all perform uh, accordingly the, the way they should perform. So Chrome, uh, if you want a Safari, or Internet Explorer, they, they all work. Firefox, they all work identical, and they all work. Very good. Well, Krista and Luis, thank you for presenting today. On behalf of you, thank you for attending today. On behalf of System Sensor, I just want to thank you for joining us today. And as a follow-up, we will be sending you a brief survey and would appreciate your help in filling that out. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll be following up with the CEU certificates and the items, if you requested anything, the items that you requested. So thank you for joining us today. This does conclude our webinar. Please have a nice rest of the day.